the challenge that I bring upon myself. It's all on the line for Lydia. She must land it. She's number one. Lydia Lassila has won the goal for Australia. Winning an Olympics was always important to me, but going for greatness in a sport and doing something no one had done was more important. She saw beyond the competition of her last Olympics event, and what she saw was the first woman ever to do a quad twist and triple. I knew I was capable. That trick had been on my mind for so long. I'm just asking mommy crash. No crashing. I always had the ambition of jumping like the men. That's what I felt was my purpose and why I was doing the sport. No, we're not going to show you the complete jump. You'll have to see the movie. Lydia's story has been turned into that feature-length documentary. It's called The Will to Fly, as she prepares once again for the next Winter Olympics in two years' time. She joins us in the studio along with producer and director Katie Bender, herself a former professional athlete. Katie, Lydia, good morning. Welcome Thanks. to News Breakfast. Thanks for having us. What do you think when you watch yourself in those <laughs> moments? What goes through your head? What goes through your body? Is there muscle memory reacting to the sight of that? Oh. Well, yes, I'm training as we, I'm jumping out of my skin as we speak. But look, yeah, there's so much training that goes into it. And sometimes your body is kind of like on an autopilot and just gets through the manoeuvres. But it's all the emotions that, and, and the brain power that, that pulling off those jumps takes. So it's what are you pretty thinking? Intense. What's going through your head when you're going through those somersaults way above the snow? Probably in the sky, I'm, you know, a little bit more on autopilot. It's beforehand, yes. it's before that takeoff, before the approach where you've got to kind of get all your cues lined up and, and really focused in and dialed in. Katie, you're a long time friend of Lydia's. How long do you go back? Oh, I think I was 13 when Lydia put a, a gymnastics medal around my <laughs> neck. Um, and I think she just won national championships for level 10. I was level five at the time and I was looking up to her from that day forward. <laughs> and when did you go into filmmaking? Um, so I went into aerial skiing and then that didn't work out. I hurt my knees too many times. <laughs> decided I would go and study film and, and work in film in Los Angeles. And um, I was working in, in movie trailers actually for about five years and then oh, so, started so to miss sport. Br brief digression, yeah. do you know that guy then? The one who talks like this. Is that the voice in the trailer? Yes, there's only about 15 of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was directing them actually. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> yeah, um, and then I was missing sport and I went and visited Lydia in Utah in 2012 and she'd just returned back to the sport as a mum and defending Olympic champion and she told me about what she wanted to do at the 2014 Olympics which was to do a trick that only the men had done and Understanding her amazing backstory, I thought that there could be a potential for a feature length documentary. And you followed Lydia very closely for the two years leading up. What were you thinking? How nervous were you about the 2014 Sochi Games? You'd just become a mum, you won gold back in 2010. Very big challenge for you. Oh yeah, look, it was a bit of a juggling act, but it was a really great adventure to have Kai along. I mean, he, for the first three years of his life, you know, he travelled the world with me and it was, you know, a little bit of a logistical challenge. We had to just shift. I was different as an athlete, you know, I wasn't the solo athlete anymore where everything revolved around me. We had mm. family and there was lots of moving parts, my support team and everyone else that came together to make sure that I could get to training and focus and, and be the best athlete I could be. Talk us through the, the biomechanics of jumping like that. I mean, how do you do you that? You really when... want an in-depth? <laughs> well, as, as far as you can take it, or yeah. as least as we can understand it, yes. Well, in essence, we're skiing into a, a jump that makes you do three flips, and it's four metres tall. Um, you hit it at about 65, 70 kilometres an hour. And that curve that's built in, I guess, does something to your trajectory. Yeah, and if you hit your takeoff position, which is pretty much as stiff as a board, <laughs> um, off the jump, that jump will actually kick you in there. That's why they call them kickers. Uh, 16, 17 metres and make you do three flips. So it's up to you then to hit that takeoff position on the end of the jump in between all the flips, watching where you're going to land, yes. never taking your eyes off the landing, yep. spotting the landing and being super aggressive down a nice <laughs> steep landing hill to, yep. to ski away. So, so it'll, it'll flip you up into the air that high. What you do with yourself up there is up to you and your training. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's going to kick you in either way, so you've got to be ready for it. <laughs> Katie, oh, amazing. a beautifully shot film. I get vertigo just watching those clips we're showing. Uh, but how much of a challenge was it for you to make it? Oh, huge challenge. I mean, um, emerging filmmakers in Australia, well, you know, to be an emerging filmmaker anywhere in the world is yes. hard, but um, uh, it was hard to get support in the beginning, and then once we had the edit, 
and we you know could prove a product then I was able to find alternate funding and 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 get it together but one of the biggest challenges was obviously the Olympic archives we showcase four Olympic games it's not cheap to license you know <laughs> Olympic footage so funding the film was hard but um, you know it's going to be definitely an empowering film I think for girls and women and we've structured the film for a mainstream audience so you don't just have to be a, a ski enthusiast to relate to the film. There's a big national discussion going on about you know feature documentaries and funding for and and whether you know that they'll continue as an art form. It, it, they can get enormous audiences when the subject matter is right. Absolutely yeah, it's definitely the aim for this. We, I think we want to try and inspire everyone. It's not just girls and women. Uh, last night we had a regional premiere out in Mansfield and for 45 Fantastic. minutes we had boys and girls with their hands up the whole time. <laughs> there there are a lot of questions. Yeah. Fantastic. But yeah. it was great that showed they were engaged and they were fully into the story and have a walk away with a better understanding, of course, of aerial skiing, but also that, that overview of, you know, life as a, as a female athlete, returning and, as a mum. personal challenge. Juggling, juggling the rest of life as yes. well as trying to achieve, you know, your dreams as a So 2018, is it going to happen? Oh, I'd love to go yes. to 2018. Um, at the moment, I've got two little boys, one's four, who um, Kai stars in the film, and the other one, poor Alec, doesn't get a mention yet. He's just a little bit of a bump at the end. I won't ruin it, but... Um, yeah, look, it, it all depends at the moment. You know, Korea's two years away, so um, we're trying to get a f training facility being built here in, in Australia so that we don't have to travel 10 months of, of the year, only about three or four for the mm. winter season. So that's, that's the aim. If that gets built, then I'm going back. Perfect. And just quickly and finally, then, you wanted to jump like a man so a, a woman can develop the strength, the muscles, whatever she needs, the focus to do those jumps just like the blokes can? Yeah, well, our sport is, is not a sport dependent on brute strength. It's yes. all relative to your size and your body type. Um, so I saw that from a really young age, pretty much when I first saw the sport as, a, as an 18-year-old, and I thought, well, this gap between male and females, it's huge. And I had a bit of a problem with it, so <laughs> made it really my mission to try and close that gap because it's a technical sport. You know, you, yeah. all you need is two arms, two legs, and something up here, and you can make it happen, and I wanted to prove that.